Hey everybody, welcome back to Trial and Error. So where we last left off with this solar, off-grid solar project, um, kind of converting uh, those solar trailers over to a pretty big uh, off-grid system, was putting in the output side, so the AC output of this power wall needed to go through something, uh, and that's the panel that uh, I was putting in at the very end of the last solar update. So uh, from there, I was waiting for the weather to break the summer heat, and uh, it has done so, so it was time to put in some serious physical labor and get all of those panels up on the roof, along with the Unistrut, uh, world's cheapest roof mounting solar system that I could come up with, and kind of just see how all of that comes together and if it works, and uh, that's what this video is all about will compress it as best I can and make it quick and easy and painless just so you can see the process uh, and with any luck we'll have this thing up and running by the end of the video so uh, with any further ado let's get into it Sorry if I chub you up here, but you're going to have to deal with the body brought to you by beer and chicken nuggets. Uh, it's still hot out, so where the peaks overlap actually gives us a perfect place to run all of our electrical cables up and through. So we're going to end up running two different boxes. Oh, there goes one piece. Uh, we're going to run two different boxes, and uh, one's going to go off to the right, the front part of the garage, and the other one's going to go off to the back part of the garage. So we get those drilled in, and I'm using inch and a half inch, which is way more than I need for the PV cables, the uh, photovoltaic cabling. Um, but my thought process is, this is a huge roof. I don't have enough panels to fill the entire garage, uh, back part of the garage right now, although I may in the future, so I want room to expand. Uh, and then my other thought was, is solar is only going to get more and more efficient as time goes on. So uh, I'd rather have a big chunk of conduit in there in case, you know, in 10 years, something comes out that generates 700 watts a cell or something ridiculous. And I need to up the gauge or up the number of cables that run through there. It's a whole lot easier to do that than it is to go back and replace all your conduit as well as your electric. So with our conduit in place, time to uh, go back downstairs and we'll start running some cables through it. I'd show you me, but I'm sweating like a one-legged guy in an ass-kicking contest. Uh, so, we've done a little bit of wiring. I'm um, running some 8-gauge uh, positive and negative up to the panels up on the roof. I've already brought one set of lines in and feeds in here. So these are going to be running at like 250 volts, uh, probably about four, uh, 40 amps, 45, maybe 50. Actually, no, it'll be closer to 60 amps because we're doing 12 panels per run. So each one of these is going to have 12 panels on it. Uh, so I'm going to run four sets of uh, PV wires up to each of those. I did uh, scoot in a little bit of conduit there, so start to give it a place to go. That conduit pops through the floor here, and then runs up to the ceiling, and then it runs over and out to uh, the stuff we just put in outside in that little peak area there. And now we just gotta go pull it through. And now I've got one set of PV uh, that we talked about downstairs uh, headed out that way. I've got the second set that we just pushed through just now. That's gonna go out this way. And then I'll have two sets coming through the second one and going out to this part of the roof. We'll have 12 panels through the other one. It's already in here. And then uh, do the same thing, 12 and actually 14 on the very last one here because i think i've got 50 panels so that should get her going but a lot of a lot of wiring a lot of work left so starting up on this side now did kind of the same thing it's working out real nice so drilled up through the roof to catch one truss did the same thing down the bottom here run a line up and down and then we just count in the holes till we know where we want to start it and we start everyone here and this roof is done 24 inches on center so uh, every 24 inches I'll put in a support and I'm alternating the middle support from the left so the top row goes to this one next row is going to go to this truss and then we'll go back and forth just to help divide the load of the panels between the trusses so that we're not just favoring three certain trusses got the tractor down here putting in a little bit of work and just lifting the steel up for me makes it a lot easier 
This steel is actually pretty heavy. And then uh, some chalk lines you'll see here. That's the start and end of each panel, just so I can make sure I'm centering up my brackets. And only 5,000 square feet more of roof to do. These have been sitting here for, I don't know, six months. Pretty tired of looking at them. But we got a lift, so that should come to a pretty quick end. So I'll show you what I've got set up so far and uh, trying to make this as productive as possible. Uh, one giant gallon jug of Gatorade. We've got these metal clips that I talked about on an earlier video that I'm using to hold them down. Here's some 3 8 hardware that's gonna bolt through those clips. And then this is for the Unistrut, it's a spring-loaded thing that pops in, rotates, can only rotate to 90 degrees and then it stops and gives you a threaded hole anywhere along that Unistrut that you need one. So that's my mounting hardware for our panels. So to get the panels up here, took some aluminum and just uh, bent them up into little brackets basically that just hang on the bottom of this uh, foot tray. So they sit here and then I've got a bungee cord that wraps across the top, keep them from falling off. Although what's nice is this is already kind of pitched at an angle back. So, you know, I probably don't need that, but um, I don't want to drop the panel. So we're going to bungee cord it just to be safe. And I think that's going to make for a productive day. So I just put my first one up using the lift. It took me like 25 minutes as I tried to figure out how to be efficient with my time and maneuvers. So I'm hoping I can get each panel down to about a 10 minute install. And then we've got 48 panels to go, so you can do the math. Uh, it shouldn't be too, too bad. It is going to be pretty exhausting, but uh, sure as hell beats carrying them up on a ladder. Well, let's get to work. Well, we got the hard part done. Just the slope on this part of the roof is just brutal, as you could probably tell, even in the time lapse. It's it's not something you can stand on. So uh, to get that all done is really a load off my mind and stress from falling off the roof. Uh, now we're onto the big part of the roof. However, that was not done without a casualty. It came with the cost of this panel, which I gave a little bit too many ugga duggas and completely crack the entire panel so it's not the end of the world these will still actually work and they'll still produce power just uh, maybe a 10 percent loss or so um, but once water starts to penetrate it eventually will cause it to fail so i did remove it from that side put it up over here so that when eventually this panel does fail it's going to be right at the top of one of these runs so i can easily just replace it without having to get a lift or you know trying to kill myself on a steep pitch um, not a big deal. I plan to buy more panels anyway to fill out the rest of this roof. So we'll use it for now for as long as it's good for and uh, once it once it dies, we'll pull it out. I knew the wiring layout was going to be a little bit more than I could handle in my head as I was doing this and I also wanted to make sure that whatever I chose to do for a layout made the most sense in terms of keeping the runs as short as they need to be. The shorter you make the runs, the more efficient the system will be overall. So I ended up putting together this little diagram of how I wanted everything wired and that'll actually help me in the future too if I need to do any service work as I sure as hell I'm not going to remember how I wired it to begin with. But if you're doing something like this, highly recommend you take, you know, 20 minutes and lay out exactly what you want so that you can continue to reference it while you're up there. Uh, in doing the grunt work, the last thing you want to have to do is actually think. Uh, actually, that's the last thing I ever want to do. But um, anyway, you want to have something of reference on a regular basis because if you screw this up and you happen to screw up one of the panels in the middle of your giant array, uh, it's going to make for a very, very long afternoon.
That, my friends, is the hum of electricity. Well, actually, it's the hum of fans. Um, but fans are needed because of electricity. So as you can see here, we'll just look at our first one. Right now, making about 2,000 watts at 140 volts. So that's under full load right now. It's putting out 37 amps at 52 volts into our battery bank. I went through a hell of a time getting everybody to talk to each other. Uh, I thought I knew what I was doing, but uh, yeah. Well, actually, you know what? I did kind of know what I was doing. I actually had a bad breaker here that was causing me a problem. So I had to replace uh, that top right breaker. Uh, there was some sort of arc fault going on with that. Uh, so that definitely screwed me up. But now all four of these guys are talking to each other. They all work in the same mode in terms of bulk and idle. Uh, all four of these inverters are now up and running and uh, they are all running the house. Uh, we just went through our first night completely on the system. And the way I did that was just half ass for right now. Um, I don't know if you can see that big six gauge cable coming out. That will eventually be what feeds my garage. But for right now, I'm just rigged it up as a back feed, just 100 amps going in. So that is back feeding the garage through this breaker. That is then back feeding into the house uh, through that main. So what needs to eventually happen here is this will get permanently wired in to the main as the main supply for the garage. There'll be a two watt cable, a big ass heavy cable, also coming out of our main distribution panel there. That will come over and feed the house and then there'll be an eight gauge charging system coming back from the grid uh, so that I have a extra, extra backup. The first uh, choice for it will be that grid power if we need, like say we go through a week of zero sun and uh, it'll pull from the grid if it needs to to supplement the batteries. And then if the grid is down, I'm gonna create some sort of I haven't figured this out yet either, but it'll be a relay based controller with contactors that will check to see if grid power is available. If grid power is available, it will charge the batteries through the grid. If grid power is not available, it will auto trigger the SMAs to kick on the Kubota diesel generator that I saved one out of my trailers for, which is going to be wired in over behind the garage. You don't have to ever hear it. It will fire that generator up and use that so that we'll have the sun. Uh, the grid and diesel generator back up so we don't have any worries ever about not having power uh, and that's the plan so uh, for all intents and purposes I'm gonna call the solar part of this project done I've got four more panels that I need to make one more line down the, the roof on which you probably saw in some of the aerial shots and uh, once I get those in that's why by the way this is only making 900 watts right now this is uh, gonna be the rear 12 right now it's only the rear six um, so once those are in, we're, we're done on, on panels, at least for now, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, if we need to add more, we can always add more. And, uh, and then I'm probably going to do another video on that automated generator grid flip flopper uh, once I kind of figure out how I want to do that. So, uh, appreciate you guys watching. As always, any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, make sure you throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody, thanks for watching and have a great day.